Hey, it's Will here from HairGuard. In this video, I wanna show you the best options you have for regrowing hair if you can't use finasteride. Now, there's a number of reasons why you might not be able to or even willing to use finasteride. The absolute most common reason is because of the side effects. Another reason is that you're looking to have children in the near future. Most doctors will recommend stopping finasteride whilst you're trying to become a dad. Some of the most common side effects of finasteride include sexual side effects. Finasteride can cause damages in sexual function, such as decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, and decreased semen volume. These side effects may improve over time or with discontinuation continuation of the medication, but in some cases they may actually be permanent. Breast enlargement or tenderness, headache, dizziness. There have been some reports of finasteride causing depression or other mood changes in some people and allergic reactions. It's important to note that not everyone will experience side effects from finasteride and the severity and duration of the side effects may vary from person to person. In addition, some of the side effects may improve over time or with discontinuation of the medication. Before we get into the main part of the video, let's just touch quickly on the good side of finasteride, which is that it's the most cost and time effective treatment out there, hands down. It's no longer expensive to buy with the generic versions being available, and it's very easy to commit to a treatment plan of taking a pill once a day. It's also just really effective for basically everyone with male pattern baldness. However, if you're watching this far in the video, it probably means that you've already decided not to use it. So what's the best hair regrowth protocol for people like me who can't use finasteride? Right, so the first thing is, before you completely give up on the one milligram finasteride dose, it's worth learning more about microdosing. Finasteride can be very effective even at a much lower dose. You may be able to reduce the side effects without reducing the effectiveness just by reducing the dose. This also reduces the cost as well, which is great. Of course, this isn't medical advice, so make sure to speak to your doctor first. Microdosing is a great option, and in Korea, the standard dose is actually 0.5 milligrams daily, but people often go to 0.25 milligrams daily, which is a quarter dose or even lower and still see good results, but with lower side effects. Next up on the list of things to think about is topical finasteride. There's some evidence that applying the finasteride topically can result in less systemic side effects. After all, we only need to reduce DHT in the scalp anyway, so why not just apply it to the scalp directly? Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that as the finasteride will go systemic and may also give you side effects when applied topically. But what if you apply the same principle of microdosing to topical finasteride? That actually could work. What do you mean by that? You could fairly easily start with a very low dose of topical finasteride and go upwards from there. Or simply reduce the finasteride dose until the side effects go away. Okay, dutasteride. The alternative is to try dutasteride, which is similar to finasteride. However, there's really not that much evidence that you're likely to get less side effects from dutasteride. In fact, you might actually get more, but it could be one option to think about. Next up is natural DHT blockers. If you're looking for a natural alternative for finasteride, then saw palmetto extract could be high on your list. This is a herbal supplement that blocks DHT in a similar way to finasteride, namely by inhibiting the enzyme that synthesizes DHT. By all accounts, it's slightly less potent than finasteride. We'll come to this in a second. On the flip side, it doesn't come with the side effects you might get from finasteride, especially the sexual ones. The most common complaints are upset stomach or perhaps rarely diarrhea, but even these are quite rare. With regards to its effectiveness, we have a very good idea on account of a large 2012 study out of Italy. This compared daily supplementation of 320 milligrams of saw palmetto versus finasteride one milligram daily in balding men. After 24 months, 38% of men treated with saw palmetto had some regrowth. This compared to 68% for the finasteride group. So finasteride had a clear advantage in terms of regrowing hair. But bear in mind that the extra hair you'll get from finasteride will not really be a lot to begin with. The major strength of finasteride is that it stops further hair loss. And in this regard, saw palmetto 
proved almost as effective as finasteride. Only 10% of men in either group experienced further hair loss over the two year study. So if you want a mild non-pharmaceutical alternative to finasteride, saw palmetto might make sense to stabilize your hair loss. Other plant-based DHT blockers include stinging nettle, reishi mushroom, and rosemary extract. You can then complement any of these natural DHT blockers with different treatments that are more potent at regrowing hair. Keep in mind that natural DHT blockers are much less standardized. A plant-based solution will contain thousands of compounds that are not really targeted, so then you also have to worry about the source quality. Natural DHT blockers can work for some people but there are additional questions which you don't have with a prescription drug like finasteride. Which brings me to the next point, minoxidil plus microneedling. Minoxidil on its own isn't very effective at regrowing hair. Only about one in two men who use it will see results, and usually these will be modest at best. But if you combine standard minoxidil treatment with weekly microneedling sessions, you get one of the most powerful hair regrowth protocols out there. It's very simple. Once a week, instead of applying minoxidil, have a microneedling session instead. The rest of the week, you can forget about microneedling and just apply the minoxidil as normal. Doing this literally multiplies your regrowth. According to the studies, this is six times more powerful than using 2% minoxidil solution on its own, and three times as powerful as 5% minoxidil. We know that microneedling also works on its own, even without minoxidil, but the results aren't that impressive. But there is something about combining these two treatments in one protocol that really boosts the effectiveness overall. Okay, on to the next point, injections into the scalp muscles. In recent years, we've had some really interesting studies where patients achieved better hair regrowth than would be expected from finasteride alone. Amazingly, you could argue the treatment was even easier than taking finasteride every day. All it required was a 60 minute trip to the clinic once every six months. That's it. And before I reveal what the treatment was, let's talk briefly about the side effects. Well, there were none. Aside from the treatment itself, which involved very small injections into the scalp perimeter, there really were no downsides for the patients. So what was the treatment? How does it work? And what were the results? You probably heard of Botox as a treatment to reduce the appearance of facial wrinkles. The way this works is the Botox blocks the nerve endings that control the facial muscles. As a result, these muscles are unable to contract and enter a state of prolonged relaxation. This relaxation in turn irons out the wrinkles. Well, over the past 10 to 15 years, scientists have discovered that this mechanism of action also carries over very well into hair loss. When you inject Botox into the muscles surrounding the scalp, these will enter a prolonged state of relaxation, which in turn lowers the tension in the scalp skin. I'll explain why this is important in a moment. But first, the results, which are actually pretty amazing. From left to right, these are the before and after photos of two balding men who received only two Botox sessions. These kind of improvements will be considered the absolute best case scenario for finasteride. Most finasteride users wouldn't see anywhere near this kind of growth. Of course, this wasn't a direct comparison, but since a lot of studies have been done on finasteride, we already have a very good idea of how much hair it regrows on average. The researchers who pioneered the use of Botox for hair loss concluded that, quote, Botox loosens the scalp, reducing pressure on the perforating vasculature, thereby increasing blood flow and oxygen concentration. In other words, by relieving chronic scalp tension, Botox restores blood flow to the scalp and revives the dying hair follicles. Another review study summarized it like this. Quote, all five studies assessing the use of botulinum toxin in male AGA subjects demonstrated favorable outcomes and across a range of Hamilton Norwood gradients injection methodologies and study durations. The authors identified the relief of scalp tension and subsequent improvement in blood flow as the most likely mechanism of action. There is, however, one very big drawback to this treatment. It's incredibly expensive. We're talking up to $1,000 a session or more. This is practically the ideal treatment aside from the cost. So if you can't or don't want to take finasteride, it's worth 
taking note of this. By reducing the scalp tension and improving blood flow throughout the scalp, the treatment regrows a really impressive amount of hair. By the way, I've linked to all the studies in the description so you can check them out for yourself. Luckily, these muscle relaxing scalp injections aren't the only way to improve blood supply and reduce tension. There's another method that you can use at home for next to nothing scalp massages themselves. Scalp massages have a similar effect as the muscle relaxing Botox injections. You're just using your own hands to help relax those perimeter muscles. The only problem is scalp massages are great in theory, but the biggest sticking point is that they're very tiring and they are time consuming. Standing like this for 10 or 20 minutes per day gets tiring on your shoulders, arms, and hands. However, there is a very good alternative which I'll tell you about in just a bit. You can broadly break down scalp massages into three different categories, which are knuckling, pinching, and lifting, or lifting and squeezing as I call it. With knuckling, you're basically using the hardest part of your hands to exert the most pressure on the scalp muscles. This works really well to reduce tension in the perimeter muscles, the same place where the doctors did the injections. The first time I did this, I was absolutely astonished how tense those muscles were. This is one of the good things about using your hands. You can really feel where the tension is. The next day, the muscles actually felt a bit sore, but over time, I can feel that tension going down. Pinching takes place all over the scalp, but primarily on the top part, where you want to grow more hair. The pinching process reduces fibrosis and calcification and activates wound healing and improves blood supply. It is hard work, but it does help. Thirdly, lifting and squeezing is all about lifting up the entire scalp and reducing downward tension. You'll need both hands at the same time lifting upwards. So ideally you want to be doing scalp massages for at least 10 minutes per day and then over a few months, you'll start seeing a difference to your scalp and your hair. Alternatively, use the Hair Guard Fully Automated Scalp Massager. It's our one-of-a-kind hands-free scalp massager designed exactly for this purpose. It now comes with a grow box, which is a battery-operated, rechargeable, and programmable box. Basically, you can sit back, relax, and let the grow band do all the hard work of massaging your scalp whilst you just get on with life. The grow band is only available on hairguard.com and there's currently a waiting list due to high demand, but I recommend going to the website to learn more. One fascinating thing about improving the blood supply is that there's evidence to show that it may even help reduce DHT. Some scientists have suggested that well oxygenated tissue might favor the conversion of testosterone to its other main metabolite, estradiol, rather than DHT. So by improving the oxygen concentration of the scalp tissues via better microvascular circulation, you could actually help reduce DHT in those tissues too. Now that is a cool, natural way to reduce DHT with zero side effects. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I really hope this helps if you're one of the many men who can't use finasteride or just don't want to. Finasteride is a great solution for a lot of men, but it's just not for everyone for various reasons. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment below and also let me know what topic you want me to cover next. If you've experienced side effects from finasteride or simply can't use it for one reason or another, drop us a comment about your experience. Leave a question below and let me know. See you in the next video.